On February 23, 2022, 47-year-old Tara Pekinich was on the phone to the police in Green Bay, Wisconsin in absolute distress, telling them that her 24-year-old son, Shad Thiron, was not only no longer alive, but was also in pieces. Can you imagine a mother discovering what she had to discover in her own basement and in a bucket, her own son's head? and other male organs. It's unthinkable. And she told the police that the person that Shad had spent the entire day with, according to her knowledge, was a woman named Taylor Shea Business. If you've never heard of Taylor Shea Business, check out the previous coverage I've done on this case. If you don't want to check that out, don't worry. We're going to do a full recap right now. We're going to look at the documents and we are preparing for Taylor Shea Business, who's 25 years old now, to go to trial. Finally, we're there. It's happening jury selection on July 21st, 2023. They say it's going to be a five day jury trial, which gives me hope that because it's so short, that it's going to be so swift to just lock her away forever and hopefully be forgotten. Because this, this person, this creature is one of the worst cases I've heard. It's just unthinkable. And she thinks she is so cool. You know, such, she's such a Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe, Wisconsin. You know, she literally is a Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe. She said it, right? That I think she thinks that she, like, did him proud or something. Always one-upping him. But, like, no. No, 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 no. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is Taylor Shea Business. Believe me, it's a glow down. Once she's now in jail. This is the victim, Shad Thiron. He was only 24 years old. Oh, man. And this is her now, you know, this is one of the court hearings. So now let's look at the documents so we can learn all about this case. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. State of Wisconsin, Circuit Court, Brown County, Taylor Denise Shea Business. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Many people say, what kind of surname is Shea Business? I don't know. I've never heard it before, but her surname, Shea Business. Okay, so these are the charges that she's facing. Count one, first degree intentional homicide Repeater, the above named defendant on or about Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, did cause the death of the victim with intent to kill that person. Contrary to, with all those codes, a class A felony and upon conviction shall be sentenced to imprisonment for life. I love the sound of that. And further, invoking the provisions of Again, all those numbers because the defendant is a repeater having been convicted of battery or threat to a judge, prosecutor or law enforcement officer in Brown County case number, which convictions remain of record and unreversed to the maximum term of imprisonment for the underlying crime may be increased six years if the prior conviction was for a felony. Count two, mutilating a corpse, repeater. The above named defendant on or about Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, did dismember a corpse. And by the way, you guys, with a bread knife. And she said out of all the knives she used in the house, the nerve, okay. But out of all the knives, the bread knife was the best because of its serrated edge. Like, can you imagine? Let's not imagine. But she dismembered a 24-year-old man's body with a bread knife. And she left his head and other male organs in a bucket. She told the police they're going to have a lot of fun looking for his organs. They found his legs and other body parts in a crock, crock pot box in the back of her minivan. And they also found other organs and all kinds of stuff. This case is like, honestly, it's hard to verbalize. It makes me kind of feel sick, you know. Okay, deep breaths. We're looking at this together. Okay, so here we go. They say, did dismember a corpse with the intent to conceal a crime. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if she tried to conceal it. Um, she said, oh, she got lazy. That's why she just left his head there. 
anyway, moving on. So they say, uh, contrary to Wisconsin stats, a class F felony and upon conviction may be fined not more than $25,000 or in prison not more than 12 years and six months or both. We're just looking for that life imprisonment, like forever and ever, just gone, gone, gone. And further invoking the provisions of because the defendant is a repeater having been convicted of battery or threat to a judge, prosecutor or law enforcement officer in Brown County case number. I'm not exactly sure what that case is about. She's got quite a criminal record and she also did attack her attorney. So it could be that as well. And her attorney quit after that, by the way. She's got another one now. That one was like, I'm not working with her anymore, obviously, right? So they say here, which convictions remain of record and unreversed, the maximum term of imprisonment for the underlying crime may be increased. Count three, third degree SA repeater. The above named defendant on or about Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, did have sexual intercourse with the victim without that person's consent, contrary to a class G felony and upon conviction may be fined not more than $25,000 or imprisoned not more than 10 years or birth. Now, wait till you see what her attorneys have decided about this. It's horrifying, honestly. I just, I really feel for this mother. I can't imagine what she's going through. And further invoking the provisions of because the defendant is a repeat, a repeater having been convicted of battery or threat to a judge, it's all the same there because of attacking her attorney in court and other criminal charges. She's already racked up. The complainant is an assistant district attorney with the Brown County District Attorney's Office and knows of the above offenses on information and belief based upon probable cause. Let's get into this. Your complainant's review of the report of Officer Alex Wainish of Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that on February 23rd, 2022, at about 3.25 a.m., Officer Wainish was dis... Wainish, Wainish. Officer Wainish was dispatched to a residence that is located in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, for a report of a severed head being found in a bucket in the basement. Upon arrival, Officer Wainish met with TP, who allowed officers into the residence. Officer Wainish reports he went down to the basement. Once he reached the bottom of the stairs, Officer Wainish observed the plastic bucket on the floor. Officer Wainish observed a shower or beach towel over the bucket. Officer Wainish lifted the towel and observed a human head inside the bucket. He looked around the room and observed what appeared to be dried blood on a nearby mattress. Your complainant's review of the report of Officer Garth Russell of the Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that on February 23rd, 2022, Officer Russell was asked to assist by going to a residence on Eastman Avenue in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin. Officer Russell gathered information that a person identified as Taylor D. Shea Business Date of birth, 11 97 who was last seen with the victim, may be living at the Eastman Avenue address. Officer Russell also learned there was a van associated with Shea Business. Officer Russell reviewed a prior photograph of Shea Business. As officers inspected the van, Officer Russell saw Shea Business emerge from the apartment building, and upon seeing the officers, she stopped. Officer Russell could see that Shea Business had what appeared to be dried blood on the front of her black hooded sweatshirt, as well as her black sweatpants. Officer Russell later found Shea Business's hands appeared to be smeared with blood as well, and there was also what looked like dried blood on the back of her sweatshirt. Officer Russell asked Shea Business if she knew why officers were there, and she stated something that sounded like, because of my warrant for my arrest? Your complainant's review of the report of Detective Jaina Liberda of the Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that Detective Liberda received additional information that TP told patrol officers that Shea Business's van, which had been parked outside her address for a day or so, was gone. Patrol and other detectives were at an address on Eastman Avenue where the van Shea Business had been using was parked and where Shea Business had been taken into custody and the van was later examined. Detective Liberda reports that in the rear passenger seat, behind the driver's seat, there was a crockpot box. Medical examiner Dr. Vincent Tranchita went to the box, which was on top of a laundry basket of clothes, and located additional body parts, including legs. Your complainant's review of the report of Detective Phil Scanlon of Green Bay Police Department, which indicates that Detective Scanlon summarized evidence obtained during a search warrant executed at the residence in the city of Green Bay, Brown County, Wisconsin, where the victim was located. Detective Scanlon reports that during the search, a human head, severed from the neck, was located in a bucket in the basement near the stairs. The head was identified visually in comparison with a prior photograph of the victim and it was confirmed to be the victim. 
According to Dr. Tranchita, there was visual evidence of strangulation observed. Also located in the same bucket was a male organ, along with body fluid and two knives. Other body parts were found in the basement in other bags, including plastic shopping bags, along with three knives, including a bread knife consisted with kitchen knives. Located in a storage tote, an upper torso was located. The upper torso had numerous rigid cuts at the site where the head was removed, consistent with the separated head. Also located in the tote was a carving knife consisted with a kitchen knife and several internal organs. Also located in the search was what appeared to be significant blood staining on an unsheeted top bed mattress, along with what appeared to be a site of previously cleaned up blood on a concrete surface next to and under a significant portion of the bed. Evidence of drug use was observed in the open on top of the entertainment center, including a glass pipe and a gem bag containing light colored powder material. Also observed was evidence of blood around a stand-up shower located in the unfinished portion of the basement and what appeared to be numerous blood drops were visible on the concrete floor in front of the shower that appeared to have been partially wiped or washed away. Detective Scanlan reports that during the search he stayed in contact with Detective Graff and Detective Kempf who at the time were questioning Taylor Shea business. Detective Scanlan reports that based on Shea Business's statements and officers' observations at the scene, Detective Scanlan found the information Shea Business was saying to be consistent with officers' findings during the search of the basement. Remember, Jeffrey Dahmer was also just an open book once he was caught, so I don't know if that was her strategy too. You just never know with these types of dark minds. Your complainant's review of the reports of Detective David Graff of the Green Bay Police Department, which indicates... On February 23, 2022, Detective Graff reports that he met with the victim's mother, TP. TP stated that around 9.30 p.m. on Monday, February 21, 2022, Taylor D. Shea Business, date of birth 11 97 came and picked up the victim. TP stated that was the last time she saw the victim alive. TP stated that her boyfriend told her that sometime Monday night into Tuesday, February 22, 2022, the victim and Shea Business returned to the home and went into the basement. TP believed that Shea Business and the victim were in the basement during the day on Tuesday. TP stated she did not go into the basement, but she did recall hearing Shea Business talking at one point. TP stated that she and her boyfriend were out of the house during the day on Tuesday. TP stated that there was a minivan parked on the road in front of the house during that time and she was not sure if it was Shea Business's. TP stated that sometime between 2.30 and 3 a.m. that morning, February 23rd, 2022, she was awoken by a storm door being slammed. TP stated that she heard a vehicle and she assumed it was Shea Business's. TP stated that she got out of bed and saw the light in the basement was still on. She stated she went to see if the victim was still there because she thought Shea Business had left. TP went into the basement and did not see anyone, so she started to walk back up the stairs and that was when she noticed a bucket next to the bottom of the stairs. TP stated she removed a blanket that was over the bucket and she discovered the head of the victim. Detective Graff reports he was then informed that Taylor Shea business was located by patrol officers and brought to the station. Officer Russell informed Detective Graff that Shea business had a large amount of what he believed to be blood on her clothing. Detective Graff observed Shea Business had a cut on her left thumb. Detective Graff also observed some scratches on her arms and hand that, according to Shea Business, were self-inflicted. Detective Graff also noticed on Shea Business's hands a red substance stain that Detective Graff believed to be blood. Detective Graff spoke with Shea Business after advising her of her rights. Detective Graff told Shea Business that a few hours ago, officers were sent to a residence in Green Bay in which the head of the victim was found. Shea Business's response was, That is pretty fucked up. Detective Graff asked Shea Business if she knew the victim, and she said she did. Detective Graff confirmed with Shea Business that she lives on Eastman Avenue, and the van that was located there was her roommate's, ST's van. Detective Graff confirmed with Shea Business that she drove ST's van to Eastman Avenue early in the morning. Detective Graff asked, where the rest of the victim's body was, and Shea Business stated that it was still in the basement. Detective Graff asked her to tell him what happened, and Shea Business' first comments to Detective Graff were, that is a good question, because she had blacked out during that time. 
Detective Graf Ashe business if it was just her and the victim in the basement and she said that it was and that nobody else had come down. Interesting how she says she just blacked out, she can't remember, but then when asked immediately after that, was it just you and the victim? Yeah, yeah, it was just her and the victim, so that she knows. One would think if she was blacked out, she'd be like, I don't know. I just told you, I have no memory of this, I don't know who was there, right? Shea Business stated that she and the victim were smoking the bitch, which Detective Graf was able to clarify with Shea Business that he believed she was referring to methamphetamine. Shea Business stated that the victim had a chain that he had put around his neck. Shea Business stated that they were getting to sexual intercourse. The strangulation was part of the sex act, according to Shea Business. Shea Business stated that she and the victim had used strangulation during sex in the past. Detective Graf asked Shea Business questions about her using ST's minivan and asked if she and the victim had contact with anybody when they first got back to the house. Shea Business then made the statement, Damn, the head. I can't believe I left the head though. Referring to the victim's head. Detective Graf then asked Shea Business where the rest of the body was and she stated it was in the basement. Shea Business responded that the police were going to have fun trying to find all of the organs as she dismembered the body. Shea Business stated all of the body parts should be in the basement. Shea Business stated there should be a foot or a leg in the minivan. Detective Graf asked Shea Business what she did with the head and Shea Business stated she'd put the victim's head in a black bucket and put a blanket over it. Detective Graf asked how Shea Business dismembered the body. Shea Business stated that she used knives that she obtained from the kitchen of the residence and that a bread knife worked the best because of the serrated blade. Shea Business stated the knives should be in a black bag along with the body parts in the basement. Again, this doesn't sound like she blacked out at all, right? Shea Business indicated that she would use whatever bag she found in the basement to place the body parts into. Shea Business made the comment that at one point she did get paranoid and lazy and that she thought it was the dope that was making her paranoid. So it wasn't the dismemberment then or the murder, just it was the dope, you know, that made her paranoid. Oh my word, this case is unbelievable. Shea Business described that she and the victim were in the basement and that the victim produced two chains, one for him and one for her. Shea Business described the chains at the time as being chain link and silver. Shea Business would later describe the chains as being like a dog choke collar. She stated that she just went crazy, referring to strangling the victim. At one point during the interview, Shea Business stated she could feel the victim's heart beating as she was choking him, so she kept pulling and choking him harder, but the victim would not die, and that he just kept rebuilding into muscle. Detective Graf asked at what point did she know that the victim was not alive anymore? Shea Business stated that the victim's face turned purple, blood was coming out of his mouth, but she did not stop. Detective Graf asked what she did after the victim died. Shea Business stated that she then played with his body. Shea Business stated that she sucked the victim's penis and that he had, had, she had a dildo and that she put into the victim's mouth and then in the victim's ass. Detective Graf asked Shea Business if, when she was choking the victim, if he tried to fight back at all. Shea Business stated that he did. Shea Business stated that she and a friend picked up the victim in ST's minivan. After picking up the drugs, the three went to the Eastman Avenue apartment. Shea Business stated that she, her friend, and the victim smoked MJ, and she said that she and the victim smoked some methamphetamine. Shea Business's friend left. Shea Business reported that she then shot up herself and the victim with trazodone. Shea Business stated that she and the victim left her apartment on Eastman Avenue and drove to the victim's mom's house in ST's minivan. They went to the basement. Shea Business stated the victim's mother's boyfriend led her and the victim into the house. Shea Business stated that it was about five minutes after they arrived that the victim pulled out the chains. Shea Business stated she then began to choke the victim and she described it as the victim lying face down on the bed with her on top of him pulling on the end of the chain. The victim coughed up blood and she was just waiting for him to die while she was watching his face. Shea Business made the comment that she was already this far so she just kept on referring to choking the victim. Shea Business said in a lower tone of voice, yeah, I liked it. And Detective Graf believed her to be referring to when she was choking the victim. Shea Business stated she thought it took three to five minutes for the victim to die. Detective Kempf clarified with Shea Business that when the victim began to cough up blood, she just kept on choking the victim because she wanted to see what happens. Shea Business made comments that she blacked out 
while choking the victim, but when she woke up, that the victim was already purple, so she kept on going. Shea Business stated she enjoyed choking him and made comments to detectives asking if they knew what it was like to love something so much that you kill it. No, Shea Business, no. Nope. Shea Business stated that she played with the victim's body for like two to three hours, which included all that stuff we said before. Oh my word. Detective Graf clarified with Shea Business that she was in the basement with the victim all during the day of Tuesday and into Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning and then dismembered the victim's body. Shea Business stated the plan was for her to, I mean, she's got a plan. Whoa. The plan was for her to bring all of the body parts with her, but she got lazy and only ended up putting the leg or foot in the van and she forgot the head. Shea Business made comments that she did not mean to kill the victim, but as she was choking him, she liked it and she would just keep going and doing it. Shea Business also made the comment that she was not prepared as killing the victim was random. Shea Business stated that she had the victim's body on the bed in the basement and she pulled him to the edge of the bed and put the black bucket underneath the victim's head as she was cutting the head off. Shea Business also talked about using a bucket and a tote to catch the victim's blood and that she would use the shower in the basement to dump out the bucket. Shea Business was asked if she thought it was the right thing to do. And Shea Business's comment was that she did it anyway, referring to the killing of the victim. Your complainant's review of the records of the Wisconsin Circuit Court Access Program website, which records, okay, so we don't have to read all this. These records indicate the defendant, Taylor D. Shea Business, was the defendant in Brown County case number. Said records indicate that on or about January 3rd, 2022, there was a disposition in said case with a judgment of conviction on a charge of battery or threat to a judge, prosecutor, or law enforcement officer. She got a history of doing this, um, you know, attacking her attorneys and making threats to the judge, law enforcement officers, etc. A felony contrary to, and so we've got that. Now, the thing is, look at what her attorneys have just filed. Now, the judge has just allowed some documents in this case to be unsealed. Others, like photos and things, are still sealed. But let's have a look at this horrific motion filed by her attorneys, which just further dehumanizes the victim in my opinion but let me know what you think in the comments below i'm sure at this point you are horrified like me by this case it's absolutely horrendous i can't wait for this trial State motion to dismiss charge count three third degree sa and motion to dismiss defective complaint to Brown County District Attorney's Office. Please take notice that the defendant, appearing specially by her attorney, Christopher T. Froelich, and reserving a right to challenge the court's jurisdiction, moves the court to formally dismiss the charge in count three, which is third degree essay, felony. The defense seeks to dismiss this charge in count three due to lack of evidence as more specifically set forth herein. This motion is brought pursuant to on the grounds that the court lacks jurisdiction over the defendant because the criminal complaint by which the defendant is charged is defective. Specifically, the complaint fails to set forth essential facts from which it could be inferred that the defendant committed a crime and fails to state the essential facts constituting the offense charged as required by the law, all in violation of the rights guaranteed by the 4th, 5th, 14th Amendments to the United States Constitutional Article with lots of numbers. The defense claims that the criminal complaint and information is defective because there are insufficient facts to support the charge in count three, third degree essay felony. The, the defense asserts that the criminal complaint is defective as to count three based on the information attached here to and arguments to be presented at a motion hearing. In further support, the defense asserts. The defense asserts that there is insufficient evidence to support the claim that ST was essayed under that, so Shad Thyron, right? The state alleges that a dildo was placed into the anus of the alleged victim, ST, yet the state lab report yields an inconclusive for DNA evidence. See attached exhibit A, which is the state lab of hygiene report dated April 1st, 2022. The report seems to indicate that the swab from the dildo indicates that the possible contribution of DNA from ST is inconclusive due to the complexity of the mixture. The state alleges sexual intercourse, yet the alleged victim's appendage 
penis was apparently found separate from the decedent's body. The decedent was not able to consent as specified in Wisconsin statutes, right? The state seems to rely on comments from the defendant who was under the influence of trazodone and methamphetamine on February 23rd, 2022, when detectives were interrogating her about the alleged essay. The defense argues that the defendant's alleged answers to questions are not reliable due to being under the influence of drugs. The jury instructions under WI, all those numbers state in pertinent as part as follows. Okay, so the point that they're making here, okay, is that they're saying that the victim was not a person because he was already dead and that his organs, male parts had already been cut off, so it's not SA. Like, can you believe this? What? Specifically here, the defense argues that ST was not a person at the time of the alleged incidents as ST was deceased and therefore the statute does not apply. The defense asserts that once the person is deceased, then they no longer are a person as defined under the jury instruction. This I can't. I can't even imagine what his family is going through. They want to drop that one charge because he was not a person because he was already deceased. Oh my word. As if this case wasn't bad enough, believe me, all these details is just absolutely terrible. I put this entire case file on Patreon if you want to read through all of it. They say as well here, to clarify this, the defense asserts that there was an appendage that was detached from a, the body on February 23rd, 2022, when law enforcement came to the home of Stony Brook Lane. The defendant was not at the Stony Brook home when police arrived on February 23rd, 2022, and the defendant was actually at the Eastman Avenue apartment. On the date in question, there were apparently other alleged body parts found in a Jimmy Choo bag, alleged body parts in an Under Armour bag, and in a Crock-Pot box found in the Chrysler minivan. The defendant apparently blacked out as she reported to police. The defense asserts and argues that it would be unlikely and almost impossible for any essay to occur with how the dismembered body was found by law enforcement. The appendage was not attached to the body when it was found and was unable to function due to its condition this is just <laughs> oh man if one thinks that this case can't get any worse it does so i hope you were ready for all this when you started this episode because it's a lot it's really a lot to take in here, they're also victim blaming real nicely by saying the decedent apparently had a chain that he apparently put around his own neck and lastly, they say the defense argues that it's impossible for the state to even be able to show probable cause that a essay occurred due to the fact that the body was found allegedly dismembered into many parts. Oh my word. So all of the swabs they did, all of the testing, this entire document, as I say, it's on Patreon. That's generally where I put case files. And if you're a nerd like me and you love reading documents that will take way too long to work through on a video then that's on Patreon so that you can do a deep dive there as well. Oh man, look at all of this. So yes, I'm gathering that now at this point you understand why I am very much looking forward to this trial. Five day jury trial, jury selection, July 21st, 2023. Let's get to it and let's make sure that that creature is locked away for life. It's bad, right? Isn't this one of the worst cases you've heard? So in closing, sending so much love and support, to Shad Thyron's family and friends, this is unthinkable what they're going through. And I can't even imagine. I mean, I'm sure, you know, normally if families go to the trial, which we don't know if they're going or not, but if they go, they really have to brace themselves for some horrendous details, right, to be revealed. I don't know if it can get worse than what's already out there, right? It's absolutely terrible. So... Thank you so much for watching this episode and paying attention to this case as we prepare for the trial coming up. I don't even know what lessons to take from this right now. Besides, don't do drugs. Stay away from serial killer fanatics. We've seen a few of those cases. There's actually a recent one in the UK as well. Another Jeffrey Dahmer fanatic who stabbed her boyfriend many times and then phoned a friend and laughed about it and all that. I don't know if you saw that case, but... Stay away from serial killer fanatics and, man, stay safe. I will see you in the next one. I think now it's time for a nature walk because this was a lot. So I hope that you're okay. 
I'll see you in the next one. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe, hit the bell. If you hit the thumbs up, just know it's not because you like the case. It's because you like the way that I present true crime, which normally we do. Presentations, bullet points, map time, documents, recaps. We prepare for trials and then hopefully we see that through. Hopefully there's no mistrial or hung jury or anything that is just swift and just, I just love it. It's so soothing when you see them just like locked away, isn't it? Oh man, so... I will uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.